Hello Kim, two students, this is Mr. Keister with you again. This is the video for Monday, August 31st, which is our scheduled eighth day of school for the fall semester. Again, my normal uh, reminder that to uh, keep in mind that the dates could change uh, for a variety of reasons, but the order of the lessons will always remain the same. Let's look at today's do nows are as scheduled for today. Today you were to pick up page 18, which is a review of mass versus volume density. We're going to get going on density here real soon. Uh, from Friday was the metric conversion line. Uh, you had uh, a homework assignment for today uh, was to complete the unit one measurements review that is now due. Uh, if you're here in school, of course, you would turn that into my desk. Uh, if you are at home, you would submit that to me electronically. Uh, either way, the answer key is available to you, either here on the board or uh, at home via my answer keys page on Canvas. And you would be able to check your work, of course, before turning that in. So today in class, we're going to look, take a brief look at talking about problem solving in general. Uh, and then we're going to get started on a review uh, of mass volume and density, which is the page you picked up today, page 18. And you are to, we're going to get started on that and do a little bit of it together. And then you will complete that assignment for tomorrow's homework. Uh, also, you have an online homework assignment, Mastering Unit 11B Measurement. Uh, that is due this coming Wednesday, uh, September 2nd by 7.30 a.m. And remember that is shut off as of 7.30. So let me uh, change the screen and we will get going. And there we go. So uh, problem solving strategy. Let me back just here. I got a little too far. There we go. All right. So problem solving strategy. Uh, analyzing and solving uh, quantitative problems in chemistry requires a logical approach. I've been using this approach forever. Uh, it was taught to me by my chemistry teacher. It has served me well, uh, not only throughout high school and college, but beyond that even. Uh, problem solving Having a strategy for problem solving is not good just for any uh, math or science type problems, but it's good for problems in general. Uh, and so uh, let's look at that. Uh, first, uh, it, it actually goes by the APCE, that's what it's called, APCE plan. And uh, the first one is analyze the information, which is where you identify and label all the data. So basically, in the problem. So basically, read the problem, see what's given to you. For instance, if it says the mass of this is uh, 2.22 grams, I underline the 2.22 grams and put a little M above it for mass. Simple enough, all right? Identify and label all the data in the problem. Second is plan. What equation or equations will the data fit into to solve the answer? Now, some data might not be listed could be inferred, could be a mathematical constant, could be a periodic table, piece of information, something along those lines, all right? In this planning part, we are writing the equation. Write equation, plug in the numbers, all right? And then next is compute, solve it, all right? Calculate the answer, round the correct number of sig figs, and label the answer with the correct unit. So, be there, round properly. We've talked about that now. And uh, label with unit, all right? Round properly and label with unit. Finally, number four, evaluate. This is, <laughs> examine your answer to make sure it makes sense. You know, it takes about 10 seconds to rerun the numbers on your calculator. It's worth the time. Probably might save you a point. For instance, if you uh, 
uh, solve, for instance, uh, uh, for the density of water. You're, you have a problem where you're given some data and you're solving for the density of water. Hopefully, you, you realize the density of water is 1.00 grams per ml or 1.00 grams per centimeter cube. Well, if you take your data in your problem and run the math and you get an answer of, you know, 224,000 uh, grams per ml, you probably made a mistake, all right? It's worth worth it, again, just to rerun the numbers, okay? Now, I summarized over here on the board, basically what I am looking for uh, on any assignment test, lab, whatever, that involves mathematical calculations, all right? And I'm going to go through this specifically with you again tomorrow when we start uh, keying in on some problem solving, which involves uh, density and specific gravity. So I'm gonna, And I'll run through this again tomorrow, but I want to mention it today. I have it up here on the board, and actually it's going to stay on the board from now till the end of the year, all right? Not the end of the semester, the end of the year. Okay. For all problems that require math, and again, this is summarizing this uh, series of steps over here, uh, but tailored specifically to what I am looking for and what I am how I'm going to grade your paper. Uh, number one, identify and label all data and the question asked. All right. So again, underline all your numbers, identify them, and then also underline uh, the question being asked. And for instance. What is the density of this substance? I'd underline what is the density and put a little B above it with a question mark. Simple enough. Secondly, write the equation. Got to do that. Write the equation. Third, uh, plug in the numbers, of course. Calculate your answer. Round it and label it correctly. Little point here, and I'm going to talk about this tomorrow in detail. Never round early. All right? If you have a series of steps, all right, before you get to a final answer, you never round until the end, all right? Leave what I call intermediate answers. Unless an intermediate answer is asked for, which then you would round it. But if it's, unless it's asked for, you never round until you reach your final answer, all right? Never round until you reach your final answer. All right, so uh, those are what my spe specific requirements are for any problem solving uh, type situation. Problems can run anywhere from 4 to 10, 15 or more points, depending on the length. All right, one point is the answer. That's it, one. All right, so. If you don't do all that stuff right there, then the points start melting off, all right? You start losing them. So get in the habit early of doing that, and it won't be an issue for you, all right? There's no need throwing away points in this class needlessly. Uh, as things progress, they're going to get harder to earn. And so throwing away the easy ones is not a good idea, okay? All right. Let's look now at the, we're going to come back to this again tomorrow again when we start hitting density and specific gravity. So I'll talk about it again in detail tomorrow. All right, let me advance the screen. Relationships between data. Two basic types, direct and inverse relationships. All right, this should ring a bell. Talked about this in Chem 1, of course. Two quantities are directly proportional to each other if dividing one by the other gives a constant value. All right. Dividing one by the other gives a constant value. All right. So uh, I wrote it down here as an example. Mass, for, mass and volume. All right. Well... The ratio of mass to volume is the substance's density, all right? Mass to volume equals density. And for a particular substance, its density is the same, all right? It's an extensive property, all right? But 
both mass and volume are extensive properties, but the ratio of those two for a particular substance uh, is the same. All right. Density is an intensive property. All right. So it's independent of sample size. It's going to be the same regardless of your samples. So although mass and volume are extensive, they vary by quantity, uh, the ratio of those two or the proportion of those two is the same. That's a direct proportion, right? As one quantity increases, the other will increase by the same value or decrease and decrease, right? The graph of a direct proportion is a straight line, positive slope, and the slope reflects that ratio between the two. All right, so let's do that. So here's a mass versus volume graph, all right? We're going to look at this again here in just a little bit. So remember, mass versus volume is density, all right? So let's say we uh, find the mass of a substance here, and its volume then is this. So there's the point right there. And then we find the uh, a, a larger quantity, its mass is here, and its volume is here. And there's that data point. And you could do that for an infinite number of places, and guess what? There is your straight line right there. All right? So the slope of this line, remember slope is y, change in y over change in x. All right? So the slope of this line, the change in y over the change in x, uh, which if for this particular uh, graph is the change in mass over the change in volume, and that ratio we said is density, all right? And, and so we get that handy-dandy little density equation, uh, d equals m over b. comes directly from this graph, all right? So what we're saying is for any point on here, the ratio of M over B is the same, all right? So if I pick this point here, and we have the ratio of point M, let's call it M1. Here's M2, or here's point, here's point 1, and here's point 2. Well, M1 over B1 equals M2 over B2. The ratio of M1 to B1 and the ratio of M2 to B2 is the same, all right? So, that look familiar? Proportion, direct proportion, all right? Things that are directly proportional end up looking in this format equation-wise, okay? And also, like I say, we can derive the equation for density directly off of this graph. And we'll talk more about that later. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next one. Inverse. All right. Inverse proportions. So it's a little different. So two quantities are inversely uh, proportional to one another if their products are a constant. Product. Okay. So a direct proportion. A ratio of the two, one divided by the other, uh, is a constant. Now, the the two variables multiplied together are a constant. Okay, this is different. So now, as one quantity increases, the other decreases by its inverse. Right. So if one quantity doubles, the other quantity is cut in half. If one quantity uh, quadruples then the other quantity is cut by one-fourth, all right? Two, one-half, four, one-fourth, all right? The graph of an inverse proportion is a hyperbola. Looks like that, all right? Looks like that. I see, use as an example pressure versus volume, all right? So if this is a P versus P, so let's take a look at that. So let's say here, here's our first point. Pressure is high right there. And if we go down here, D is very small. 
So large B, low B, all right? On the other hand, let's uh, pick this point right here. Well, here we have a very a much smaller value of P and a much larger value of V. But when you multiply the two together, you get the same value. So you get a constant, okay? So, uh, so here again, multiplying them together. So if we take this point, which is P1 and V1, and we compare that to taking this point here, which is P2 and V2, the product of those two is equal. And therein lies the derivation of the equation for two variables that are inversely proportional to each other. And I don't know if you remember this or not, but P1, V2, or P1, V1 equals P2, V2 is the mathematical equation for Boyle's Law. All right? If you don't remember that, that's fine. We're going to look at that again when we get to the unit on gases. All right? So remember this then, that for an inverse relationship, it graphs a hyperbola. For a direct relationship, it graphs a straight line, positive slope. Okay? All right. Now, this is our uh, uh, starts our lesson for tomorrow, but before we go into density and specific gravity, let's do a quick review of mass, volume, and density. All right? So I'm going to pull up the paper that you picked up today, which is right here. Okay, Let me grab my paper here. All right, first let's look at particle diagrams. Use the particle dot. Oops, that bell's not supposed to be going off right now, but we've been having bell issues, so sorry about that. Use the particle diagrams below to answer the following questions. Study the matter in figure one below. Assume the particles are uniformly distributed throughout each object, and particles of the same size have the same mass. Okay, so uh, under number one, question A, it says compare the masses of all three objects. Well, take a look here. How would you determine which one has the most mass? Remember, mass is related. Mass is the quantity of matter it contained, and we're representing quantity with particles. So basically, simply put, uh, you just count them up, all right? So I think this has 13 particles here, and a let, a letter box letter or box B has 27 particles, if I counted correctly. And box C has 23 particles. So based on that, uh, the mass of B would be largest, uh, which would be greater than the mass of C, which would be greater than uh, the mass of A. All right? More particles, more mass. Okay? Bear the volume of the three objects. Okay, volume is the amount of space that matter takes up. So basically, in a, in a particle diagram, uh, volume is represented by size of the box, all right? Size of the container. And it appears to me uh, that box B or, or diagram B is larger than either A or C. It looks like A or C are about the same, all right? So I would then say that the volume of B is greater than the volume uh, of A or C. Okay. So basically, a bigger box, uh, more volume. Okay. Then letter C, compare the densities. Okay, now density, remember is a ratio, we just talked about it, uh, is a ratio of mass to volume. 
mass divided by volume gives us this constant ratio that we call density. Uh, so when you're looking at the density of something, you're looking at the ratio of its mass to volume, which basically in a particle diagram is going to interpret to spacing. Right? So if you look at the spacing uh, in these, these particles are spaced pretty close together, all right? meaning their mass versus volume is pretty large. These appear to be about the same, appear to be about the same, I would think. So basically the density of C appears to be greater than uh, the density of A or B, all right? And uh, A and B seem to be similar, maybe the same. Kind of hard to tell for sure, all right? Okay? All right, let's look at, uh, at least start to look at the graph here. This is a review. And then I'm going to turn you loose on this for tomorrow, okay? Let's just talk about the graph for a sec. All right, so this is what we were just uh, looking at a little bit ago when we were talking about direct proportions. This is a mass versus volume graph. So a mass on the y, uh, volume on the x, and of course y over x, which is slope, uh, in this case is equal to density, which again is where d equals m over b comes from. So let's um, look at this. So here it appears we have two substances, A and B. Uh, their mass versus volume or densities obviously are different. If they were the same, they'd look they'd be the same line. All right. And here we're given this. Y equals 4.54x and y equals 2.70x. Well, let's think about what that means. Remember the uh, slope intercept? form of the of your equation. Remember that for math? So y equals mx plus b. That sound familiar? Sorry about the bell again. Uh, remember that m is the slope of the line and b is the y-intercept. Well, if you look over here, the y-intercept for both of those lines is zero. All right? which is a valid point if you remember on a density graph. If something, if there's no mass, then there's no volume either. So zero, zero is a valid line on any, or a valid point, I should say, on any density line. All right, so anyway, uh, these could say plus zero, but since the y-intercept is zero, it doesn't need to be there, all right? So then what is this telling you? Well, if this is the slope, then that would be the slope of those two lines, all right? That would be the slope of those two lines, all right? So I'm just going to leave it at that. You've got, you're to study this graph and then answer the questions on the back of this assignment. That is your homework for tomorrow. And uh, having said that, that ends today's lesson. So until next time, uh, this is Mr. Keister signing off. Stay safe, everybody, and I will catch you next time. See you later.